What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right man, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen coming to you from my couch in my house. So I'm feeling very comfortable right now. And uh, if you take a look, you know what I'm saying? I got all my military gear, you know, feeling like a soldier because I'm fighting for motivation, man. I'm fighting to be inspired. I'm fighting for positivity. And you have to do the same thing every single day if you want to be great in this game and if you want to be great in life. I want you to fight for the positive mindset. Hey guys, I'm your number one fan. I really am, man. You can do this. So before Ninja, Christian Ronaldo was the biggest athlete on social media. Good run by Ronaldo, surely this time, yes! And by 2018, I mean, Ninja started blowing that out of the water. I mean, with his all of his social interactions, right? So, but where did his beginning come from? You know, Ninja started off by, you know, competing in Halo tournaments, right? And, and just doing what he was doing in that scene to changing the entire gaming landscape as we know it. So I'm so excited, man, to show you guys in this video Ninja's story. So we're going to do our question of the day. What is your opinion on Ninja, you know, and his switch from Twitch to Mixer? Really curious to find out. Let us know in the comment section down below. All right, guys, now it's time to get into the good stuff. All right, so in this season, more than ever, everyone has it in themselves to become a gaming superstar. You just need to believe in yourself, right? And then level up your skills. So the Pro Guys website, guys, has you guys covered where we have pro coaches that can help craft you into the ultimate Fortnite player. They're going to teach you structure, mental discipline, mechanics, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Did you? How did you die? How did you die? Ramp. You got stuck in the ramp? So I'll... I'll I'll go for it, okay? I'm gonna jump and land on it, okay? And I should get it. Just like any kid, Ninja's love of video games can be traced back to his early childhood. At 10 years old, he was introduced to the futuristic FPS Halo. And while his brothers thought, you know, he might be too young for the game, he completely destroyed both of them. These early days of Halo were the spark that ignited the flame for Ninja. The inner passion that would serve to thrust him into the gaming athlete he's become, for sure. He would stay up into the early hours of the morning just to get better at the game, which was about the same time Ninja's brothers realized keeping up with their brother wasn't going to be easy. Ty! 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 Oh! <laughs> the bait! The bait and switch, dude. Ninja needed to scratch the competitive itch that had been building up while playing Halo as a kid. Luckily, LAN events were already pretty big and established in the competitive Halo community. It wasn't too long before Ninja had found himself a team to start competing. The first time Ninja got to experience the competition that he had been craving since he was a little kid was when he played in a Halo 3 tournament at MLG Orlando in 2009. But it wasn't until Halo Reach release that Ninja really started to hit his stride. In all of the tournaments that Ninja took part in during this period of Halo's history, he never placed less than the top 16 in the tournament. Reach was also the first time Ninja had been able to represent an actual established esports org when he played with Invictus at MLG Dallas in 2011. Chasing us, he's one shot. Let's go! Halo was where Ninja experienced his very first competitive gaming victory. This was at the Halo 4 Exhibition, a tournament that took place before the game had even released. Throughout the entire tournament, Ninja and his team, the Warriors, only lost a single match. Throughout the rest of Halo 4, the worst placement Ninja ever experienced was third place. Halo, taking a small little break ski um, uh, from, from Halo, focusing more on uh, other games and streaming. As Halo 4 ended and Halo 5 began, Ninja was starting to feel the strain. He played with a bunch of major teams, but the landscape of the gaming was already shifting. H1Z1 had proved that arcade shooters were out and battle royales were in. Ninja posted a video on August 13, 2017 that lashed out at the Halo esports community. He claimed that the whole thing was a joke that without proper budgets and developer support, it was destined to fall apart. And he was done with all of it. And it's not even like the people are doing a bad job. It's like there's 100% no budget there and there's definitely not enough people or staff like because they don't f care. Instead of competing in the next set of Halo competitive matches, Ninja said he was going to take a break. 
He got married, he went on his honeymoon, and then traveled to Germany to compete in Gamescom's PUBG Invitational Tournament. He could have returned to Halo when he got back, but instead, he decided to focus on building up his streaming career. Ninja's major rise to fame began in the summer of 2017, alongside of the release of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Where there had been other Battle Royale games before PUBG, this was the only one that really caught the eye of streamers and viewers across the world. But that didn't last for long, because Fortnite was just on the horizon, and that would trap everyone's attention for years to come. You can't say that, dude. I, I was I was working a full-time job at Noodles and Company, taking college classes and streaming like eight hours a day, minimum. It didn't take long for Ninja to establish himself as one of Twitch's most popular Fortnite streamers. He only started playing the game on October 3rd, 2017. He said the game was pretty fun, but he probably didn't realize just how much of an effect Fortnite would actually end up having on his stream numbers and his life. Because, you know, by March 2018, Ninja's stream had ballooned from 500,000 followers on Twitch to over 2 million. March 2018 was the month for Ninja, just as that period of time was the time for Fortnite. It seemed like Ninja and Fortnite fed off of one another, propelling each other to bigger and greater heights. It's easy to argue that all this started when Ninja had Drake, you know, Travis Scott, Juju Smith, all on the same stream at the same time. This stream simply broke the internet. There's no other way to put it. He pulled in 635,000 concurrent viewers, trashing the previous world record for viewers in a single player stream. People flocked from all over the world to see Ninja play with some of the most recognizable names in music and American football, whether they were fans of Fortnite or not. This night put Ninja's name on the map of not just every gamer, but every household entirely. He was known as the guy who broke down the walls between the gaming and mainstream, something which had been happening slowly for years, but never as quickly as with Ninja and Drake's influence. Every day in March, Ninja streamed to a combined audience of over 90,000 people without fail, a feat that may never be accomplished again. Ever since the release of Fortnite, you know, parents and mainstream news stations have been trying to portray the game as addictive and dangerous to the mental development of kids. Since Fortnite's been around, there is no skateboard, no scootering. He loves to be in that room 24-7 if he could, stay awake he would. Ninja streams gave parents something positive to latch onto because, you know, he's never tried to say that gaming and streaming are the only things that a kid should focus on. He's admitted on live television that kids shouldn't just be focusing on games, but on schoolwork as well. In other words, Ninja helped open gaming up to a whole bunch of skeptical parents, allowing Fortnite's player base to bloom further than ever before. In fact, the number of registered users of Fortnite worldwide can clearly be seen to have been impacted by Ninja's actions and growth in early 2018. By January 2018, Fortnite had 45 million registered users, meaning people who had made an account with Epic and booted up the game at least one time. By June 2018, just six months later, that number had almost gone up to 125 million players. Fortnite likely would have had reached its peak eventually by themselves, but Ninja's actions can easily be seen to have increased the game's growth. Ninja's playing alongside, you know, Drake did more for Fortnite than just increase its general popularity. You know, it gave Epic an idea. What would happen if you took 50 of the best Fortnite players and then took 50 incredible celebrities, threw them in together for one giant battle royale at E3? This was exactly what happened at the Fortnite Pro-Am. 3,000 fans were given access to watch celebrities like Marshmello and Paul George team up with pros like Ninja and Minth. In the end, Ninja and Marshmello were even able to win the event that he had inspired, bringing home $1 million for charity. This Pro-Am tournament wasn't where, you know, things ended. Competitive Fortnite continued to blossom and grow, becoming the second most watched esports on the planet by 2019. The World Cup solos had a peak concurrent view count of 2.33 million, which was only surpassed by the League of Legends World Championship Final. All of this success had its roots with how Ninja helped to progress the game forward, and esports will probably never again be the same. But success can't last forever. Eventually, you're gonna hit a road bump in your journey. And for Ninja, that may have been his deal with Mixer. Ninja, you are one of the most popular streamers on the planet, but you, made, you just made a big switch because you were over at Twitch for a while. Now you're at Mixer. Yes. Now why the switch and, and do you like it? What's happening? Yeah, I absolutely love it, man. And uh, for people that don't know, Microsoft is a, you know, 
owns Xbox, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. In August 2019, Ninja made a choice that no one could ever predict it. He revealed that he was going to be leaving Twitch and the 14.7 million followers he had on the platform behind. Instead, he would be exclusively streaming on Microsoft's streaming platform, Mixer. Ninja thought it would be a return to the roots of streaming for him, a chance to breathe some fresh air into his career. Instead, it looked like he was destined to go stale. All right, so there's no doubt that Ninja was offered an insane sum of money to jump ship from Twitch, but it was still a leap of faith as far as the viewership was concerned. After he joined Mixer, Ninja's viewer average dipped down to 12,000 viewers in each stream, which was around three times less than what he was achieving at Twitch. But for Ninja, you know, this decline in viewers was probably expected and, you know, may have even been a part of a grander plan. Not only were Ninja's viewing figures down, but his airtime was also down. You know, over the last five months of 2019, Ninja actually streamed 475 hours less than he did during the same period in 2018. This seems like a losing formula for a streamer. Perhaps Ninja was falling off. Perhaps this would be the end of the road for our headband wearing hero. Or perhaps not. So over the past few years, Ninja has been working on building not just a stream, but a brand. Ninja has become much more than just a streamer, and he has been able to reach a broader audience than almost any other video game influencer in the world. He's made deals with companies like Red Bull, Uber Eats, and Adidas. A deal he did with Samsung saw him appear in numerous nationally broadcast commercials, and his Adidas custom trainers sold out nearly instantly. Ninja's ability to break into mainstream media was something he established back in 2018, with appearances on shows like Ellen and Jimmy Fallon. But since that point, his brand has only gone on to expand even further. In 2019, Ninja was the subject of his very own comic book, and already this year, Ninja has made an appearance on The Masked Singer and will be playing himself in a movie called Free Guy, which is set to release later on this year. Fortnite themselves haven't forgotten Ninja either. They know just how influential he was to the growth of their game. He was the very first streamer to receive his own iconic series skin, which was based on the streamer. Sure, you can look at Ninja's daily averages and the amount of streams, you know, that he does, and you could come up with the claim that he's fallen off and he's becoming less influential. But, you know, when you're talking about someone on his level, then this really isn't the case. The fact of the matter is this, all right? Ninja has become one of the most influential and important figures in content creation and gaming in the past decade. His rise has not stopped yet, all right? And he hasn't really even begun to decline. Ninja's story, his journey, and his evolution into something more than just another streamer may only just be getting started, and no one has any idea where that adventure might lead him. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Hey, and share with all your friends what's happening here at Pro Guides Fortnite. Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. All right, peace.